Hi, this is Richard. Today we're going to be talking about taking a picture and turning it into a hand-painted texture. Or, it's not actually going to be painted by hand, we're just going to use some filters to give that impression. So first, we're going to be doing all of our work in GIMP, and not very much in Blender. Um, and I'm going to show you the finished result, which if you want to get to that, you also need to watch my materials video, which is in my intermediate Blender um, playlist. So, if you're wondering how I get to the finished product, which is right here. I'll just move this around a little bit so you can see our finished product. If you're wondering how we get to this from what I do today, then make sure you watch that materials video as well because that's going to be instrumental in getting you the rest of the way. This is our goal and we're going to start in CG textures. This is what we're going to start with. Now CG Textures, you can get a subscription to it for $75 per year, but they also have a free version. You just make an account, and then you come in here and you go to Floors, and then you can go to uh, Streets, and then you can click on this tiled one, which is going to be great because it'll tile seamlessly. And then you can download the smallest version right here, and you click it and it'll download down here. And then you can just drag that downloaded file into GIMP. There is one plugin you need for GIMP, that is Cartoonizer. It's going to do really well separating our colors out to make it look like we're using a limited palette of paint. And I'll provide a link for that in the description to this video. So then we're going to open up GIMP and we're going to load in our image. Now, why, people are going to say, why don't you just go up here to filters and pick out an oil painting filter like Oilify. And look, you're going to get something that looks like you got on your mom's computer and threw a filter on it and it's not going to look very good in your game. It might be passable, but I want things to look nicer than this. And that's where we're going to use multiple filters so we have a little bit more control. Let's get rid of that ugly thing. And we're going to go in here, filters, and we're going to get started. Enhance, despeckle. This is going to do most of the work for us right away. The default is just adaptive checked like this and that still looks a lot like a picture. Make sure you check recursive as well. That's going to muddy up some of these details a little bit. Then, since that's been muddied, we're going to unmuddy it with Enhance, Sharpen. Turn this up to 40. That's really going to add some of these hard edges back on here. And then we're going to go to Filters and Artistic Cartoonizer. Now, depending on the range of color that you have, in your image, turn this number of colors up or down because it's going to separate the colors apart. See here on this block you've got like a gradient of colors because it's from an actual photograph. Nothing's actually just one or two colors. But you don't want that. You want it to look like it was from a limited palette of colors because it was hand painted. So this is going to separate those colors out. Don't worry about these other colors or these other options. It's just going to change coloration of your image, which I don't like. I want to keep as much of the actual color integrity of the image as possible. I don't want to filter to change things where I don't know specifically what it's doing, so I just leave that on plain. Then that gets us pretty close. We're going to do enhance, oop, oop, nope, sorry, blur, selective Gaussian blur. And now these numbers here, blur radius and max delta, the larger the size of your image, the larger the resolution, the higher these can be to get this effect. The smaller resolution of your image, the smaller these numbers should be. And you just want to kind of feel it out and make sure that you're, uh, you've you got the best result on your preview possible. The default for this is 50, and as you can see for this picture, that is uh, way too blurry. So I'm going to turn it down to 30 for, whoops, for this size, and 5 on here, and we're going to hit okay and that just takes that uh, colorizer that we did and smooths it out a little bit so you still get those two tones right here uh, and it looks really nice much less realistic still very reminiscent of the original image then one last thing that I want to do with this one is I want to go back enhance and do another despeckle just to get rid of some of these last little problem areas there, I think that looks great, much better than just applying that oil paint. Let's take all these off and show you real quickly what we went through. This is the original image, then we did despeckle, sharpen, 
Cartoonizer, Selective Gaussian Blur, Despeckle again. And we have our final image. Then File, Export As, and then we're going to choose our folder. And then we're going to export this. I already have it exported. You're going to hit Export. Another window is going to pop up, and you're going to hit Export again. Make sure you change this to a PNG. Everything you download from cgtextures.com is downloaded as a JPEG, and you want to make sure that you save as a PNG. It's a very lossless, or it's a lossless uh, compression format. PNG is so that um, you're going to have the full integrity of your colors and everything that you've done. It's going to. That's really important for Blender as well. Uh, there are some things that JPEGs just can't do in Blender, especially with maps. These are all my generated maps uh, that I did from the other video the materials video. If you want to learn how to do that, watch that video. It takes about 40 minutes, so we're going to skip it for this one. You'll hit export and you'll hit export again. So that's how we make this hand painted texture and then let's go back to this finished product. Here it is as a video game asset. And you can see that normal map is making this bumpy and adding shadows. We can turn this completely off so you can really see it. And how well this works. Now I found one thing with hand painted textures. The higher your normal map is, like if we set this to one, it's really super bumpy and it looks like stones are placed in it. It doesn't look very hand painted. Uh, the kind of blurred hand painted textures are placed over that normal map and make it very glossy, um, smoothed over, like it's got globs of paint on actual rocks. And if we turn this down to zero, that's completely hand painted, our total hand painted texture. and that'll look very hand painted. Or we can take this and put it on like 0.3 is what I had it on. So there's some texture on it. So you still get some nice shadow play off of this, but it still looks very hand painted. And then with those other maps like this, I've uh, got the ambient occlusion here to make your shadows darker or lighter. That's really, that's way too much. And there we go, that's basically it. Here's your finished result. We did all that in GIMP in, oh what, like 10 minutes? That's pretty good for each major texture that you're gonna be using. That extra amount of time is gonna give you a much better end result. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.